Wanda Fridays, Wanda Vision episode 4. Now, in today's episode, they switched up. We don't get much Wanda, we don't get much Vision. The attention is instead turned to Geraldine, or as she is actually called, Monica Rambeau. Now, this is something I didn't realise initially, but she is actually the little girl in Captain Marvel, the daughter of Mother Rambo. Can't remember her first name. This is her all grown up. Obviously, Captain Marvel was set in the 80s. This is the present day now. And today's episode, which I didn't expect, I thought it was quite premature in a sense, they decided to tell us what was going on with this sitcom world that Wanda and Vision are living in. Now, as we saw in the last episode, Sword was teased with the little chain that uh, Monica was wearing, or Geraldine. And we see that she actually works for that organization. Obviously her mother was a pilot in Captain Marvel, the same as Captain Marvel was a pilot. That's what Sword is, it's all about sort of spacecraft and extraterrestrial stuff, all that sort of thing. Now Monica has actually been in the, the click thing that Thanos did. She comes back at the beginning of this episode, sort of a flashback type thing. She was one of the people that disappeared. Her mother, Mother Rambo, is now dead. But she's a bit confused about it all because she's been disappeared this, this whole time. But she's put back into the field of work. She teams up with the FBI uh, and it's played by the fella who played Kim Jong-un in the movie The Interview. It's very hard to take him seriously as an FBI agent because I just see Kim Jong-un. And once again, as I mentioned in my Mind Hunter thing, that's the problem with the FBI, in, in things like Marvel shows especially, you just can't take them seriously. They don't feel like authorities. And it's the same with the sword thing, really. It all just, it feels like that cliche thing. But we're used to that, it's Marvel, it's what you get. Now the FBI agent takes Monica to Westview, which is where Wanda and Vision are living in this weird uh, TV sitcom world. Now it appears that no one has a recollection of Westview, like it doesn't seem to exist to people. They have an amnesia about it of sorts. Now when they get to Westview, they see there's like an energy field around the outside of it. And you can get through it, but whatever goes in there doesn't seem to come back out, it just disappears. And this is where things start being explained, like from episode two, I believe it was, when Wanda finds the little toy helicopter in the garden. That was actually a drone type thing that was sent through by Monica. It went through, it disappeared, and obviously it appeared in Wanda's front garden. Now Monica gets curious, she goes up and she gets sucked in. Now everybody on the outside is very confused about what's going on. You've got our FBI agent, and you've got the girl that was in Thor, um, Natalie Portman's friend, I can't remember her name. Now, I, I'm i not really a big fan of her character. I find her somewhat irritating. She's all right, but you know, I just, I, I wasn't really sure what she adds whole bunch to this. I don't know, I found that her and these agents and stuff, they kind of took me out of it, of the authenticity of it. It was a bit too humorous for my liking. I I've been enjoying the slapstick comedy sort of stuff we've been having with Wanda and Vision. I found that extremely entertaining. And this is just, it's one of the drawbacks I think from this episode, it just didn't quite feel as authentic and as good as what we've been getting so far. But either way, that's a small issue, it's not huge. Now as the episode is progressing, we're learning more and we're learning more why strange things have been going on in this uh, TV sitcom world in Westview. We understand why Wanda heard that voice through the radio. It's the FBI man trying to communicate with her. We understand the man in the bee suit that appeared out of the drain. That was an agent that was sent in by the FBI or S.W.O.R.D. or whatever to try and see what's going on. And it's kind of always been begging the question why Wanda has been reacting the way she has when she says, no, I don't want you here. I don't want that here. Because I was always under the impression well, I think we all were so far that someone else had created this world and put them in it, as in Wanda and Vision. They'd been placed in this world and they were trapped there. But the things that were sort of showing was that she was actually in charge of this world. She seemed to have some sort of rule over it. And then, of course, with Monica not actually being part of this world, she's instead someone that's infiltrated, which would explain, of course, why their neighbours were saying, you know, she doesn't have a home. She doesn't belong here. She's... She's a stranger around here. And of course she has the knowledge of the modern day, the stuff about Ultron which she mentions to Wanda in the previous episode, which causes her to be removed from Westview. Now the end of the episode is where it gets very, very interesting. It's revealed that Wanda is the one that actually removed Monica from the world after what she said about Ultron. At the end of the last episode, we saw Monica had been kicked out of the world and obviously all the agents were surrounding her. We were confused about what's going on. We now know the premise for that. It's the case that she'd been sent in, she gets sent back out, and all the agents are like, oh shit, Monica's back. And then the pivotal moment, the bit that finally made it clear to me what the hell is going on here, is when Vision re-enters the house after Wanda has removed Monica. And then as she sees Vision, he looks like a corpse, and the Infinity Stone is missing from his head, and he's gone a, a pale purple deathly colour. Now, for some reason, I don't know why I forgot about this, but Vision is actually dead. He died in Infinity War and he didn't come back in Endgame. From watching the show, I haven't seen Endgame in a while or Infinity War and I was just 
it just seemed to go over my head and I assumed that he actually came back to life. But he doesn't because the Infinity Stone is his life support. That's the thing that makes him live and Thanos does get it in the end. So when Wanda sees him, she turns away and Vision's like, what's going on? And then she looks back and he's back to normal. And then it hit me. Then I realized what was going on here. I had this revelation. I was gonna be like, oh my God, I know what's going on. I can explain to you guys what's going on. But then actually in the next scene, Monica goes, oh yeah, it's all Wanda. And I was like, no. I wanted to say that. I wanted to be the one to reveal this revelation. But yes, Wanda has created Westview. She's created this ideal sitcom, perfect world. She's brought Vision back. She's having children with him. She wants to live a normal life with him. And that explains everything that's been going on here. Wanda misses Vision and she wants the family life and she just wants a normal life. As we saw at the beginning of Infinity War, they were just trying to get away from it all and just be with each other. And this is how she is finally accomplishing that dream with Vision dead. She has created this fake world where they can live happily ever after together, which would explain the time lapses. It would explain how somehow she's had a baby in about five minutes. It explains everything. Of course, I can't wait for what's next. Uh, I guess we might return to the the sitcom vibe again, this was almost like a one-off episode in terms of, right, we'll tell the viewer what's going on here. I kind of feel like maybe it was a little bit too soon though, as I said before, I feel like they they kind of jumped the gun on it. I was very happy to just continue with this, this theme that we have going on. I, I like the little, you know, sneak peeks and the, the little things that were showing that something wasn't right here but they've just sort of gone you know what let's tell them what's going on which i guess makes it a little bit more interesting you can see this unstable side to wanda now but i think in terms of the flow of the episodes the first three felt very continuous and this just felt like very different two very different you know ends of the spectrum i'm not i'm not disappointed i, I really like what we've learned but maybe they could have done it in a in a more subtle way bided their time a tiny bit more because this is the sort of show where i think say if you hadn't seen any of the marvel movies you could maybe sit down and watch this you would be a bit lost but you could sort of follow along with it because everyone was on the same level of confusion but then when you throw an episode like this in those viewers would be like what is going on i think you know, it, it, it's kind of messed with the balance of the show and the way it's been flowing. You know, th this is me being critical because I think so far it's been excellent and it's just felt very, very different. But saying that nonetheless, I can't wait for next week's episode. The big revelation has now happened and it's going to be interesting to see how that progresses. I, I imagine the show might even take a thing of balancing, you know, doing a 50-50 split between the two, between Monica's side of the story and Wanda's side of the story. I'm curious to see how that will pan out. If you've got any theories, let me know in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content next week, and I'll see you in the next one.